place gave me a considerable amount of trouble, and I really had to struggle with a good rating to give this place. But at the end of it all, I've kind of taken everything into consideration, and given all the threats there, given the level, this is what I've concluded. I give the Castle Keep a 5 out of 10. There's a lot of stuff in this stage that is out to kill you, like the birds, although here they're not as big of an issue as they were in the inner halls. Again, as I've stated before, as long as you only have access to the top half of the screen, the birds are really not that big of an issue. Weaving around the Medusa heads in the down scrolling room is a little tricky, but as long as you know how to position yourself and crouch accordingly, that's no problem. Uh, the bone pillars and the crumpling blocks with the spikes underneath, you need to position yourself just right so that you don't sink immediately, and or stand on top of the spike on the spike blocks if there are any for the first one. I forget if there is any. I'm, I'll do my research and in the next video you'll see. But the room after that, honestly, is a pretty big problem. Spider, not an issue. Uh, the three skeletons after that, those are the problems. Um, it's mainly dealing with the red skeleton and the bone throwing skeleton from above. That's really hard to do considering we do not have any vertical attacks. We only have our horizontal attack, which is the whip. And yeah, I mean, I give two points just for that, and one point probably for the birds and or the Medusa heads. The last room, not even a problem. And so happy we're not playing the US game because they throw bats at you in that level, and they remove the checkpoint right before the Dracula battle. But checkpoints don't mean shit to us because we're doing this all in one go anyway. And now time for the Dracula battle. Dracula gets a lower rating despite having more forms this time around. He gets a 2 out of 10. I was considering giving it a much higher rating because I haven't faced Dracula in such a long time. But here's the main thing to note. He is 100% pattern based. He does the exact same stuff every single time you face him. It's all a matter of knowing where to position yourself and how to whip him as quickly as possible and his forms as quickly as possible so you can progress to the next one. All three of his forms, very pattern based. So I mean, it can be difficult at first, but once you know what you're doing, it honestly isn't that bad. I struggled a lot on form three, but it's all memorization and proper positioning to get the ideal fight. I mean, it's not like Dracula 2 in Castlevania 1, where you don't know for sure if he's going to do a high jump or a low jump. Or the first form, not knowing if he's going to spawn nowhere near you or spawn right on top of you. So 2 out of 10 really is all I can give Dracula in Castlevania 3. However, we're not completely done with this. Um, next time you'll see me, we're going to be going to Super Castlevania 4. I will immediately be tackling Grant, Sypha, and Alucard after this, but that's those are going to be completely separate playlists, so I will include links to those once those videos are created. Those will be at the end of this video. But, for the time being, you guys are wondering, where's the ending? Well, that's what I've decided to save for you guys to enjoy. So kick back, relax, enjoy the ending, and I will see you guys in Super Castlevania 4.